Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, today is going to be a taping day. I uh, uh, have been mailing out my copies of Iron Sights, and I ran out of my labels, and I had to overnight them, but I might not get here till tonight, so I'm just going to be taping boxes the whole day. <laughs> I'm going to shoot for about uh, 200 or more, but anyway, uh going to do this video. Uh, I am getting behind on my comics. I probably won't be to the comic shop till Wednesday. I've got to tell you though, this is, uh, this is not just the highest level cringe warning I've ever given on a comic. This is existential. Like, this is like seven years in Tibet. What I'm saying is you're going to be different after you watch this and you're not going to be, you're going to be angrier. <laughs> you're going to be angrier. And you're going to have more hate in your heart because uh, uh, what you're going to see is uh, destruction. Destruction by idiots who nobody will rein in. Idiots who are completely pleased at what they're doing. What are they doing? They're not sure. But they're absolutely sure that they're doing an amazing job at it. This is literally the self-esteem generation getting to uh, be in charge at Marvel. So... Um, Again, I have to emphasize, this is one of those videos where you do need to look at the screen, but I also understand that you are going to have to look away because you are <laughs> you're about to go through some stuff, man. I went through this stuff it was yesterday and you're going to share it with me. So uh, this is like the player on Twitter, so it's kind of hard to start it. There. Okay, so I got to grab it and uh, okay. Hi, I'm Lorraine. And I'm Langston. And this is Earth's Mightiest Show. Oh, oh uh, it's Earth's Mightiest Show because I thought it was Sesame Street. Why are you guys over-enunciating, over-expressing, and talking as if you're talking to children? Because we're going to see you're not selling plushie dolls or, you know, little uh, action figures to four-year-olds. You're talking about going to a convention. A convention... That is very expensive and is about 5% children. Wait, Langston, we gotta get to the convention center for New York Comic Con. Oh, you're right, you're right. Hey, slow mo run? Yeah. Okay, so I, I hate, I like, you know how sometimes like, hate's a very strong word. I hate these people. I, I actually hate them as people. <laughs> like, uh, my buddy, uh, he has his uh, kids over on the weekends, and so, and he's a big YouTube head, so, uh, you know how YouTube, if you, if you watch some stuff, it keeps recommending. So, uh, there's this, uh, I think they both have their own channel, but they're married, so they just kind of flip their show between, but it's called, uh, Chad Wild Clay and V Quaint. And there's this young married couple in California, I think. And they do a show that's basically a mystery show for four year olds. Uh, they're always talking about a hacker, <laughs> but it's, it has nothing to do with hacking. A hacking, it, it's just like little kids know hackers, someone's scary. Uh, so they're always like finding clues like, ooh, the hacker left this here. And this is how they act. Mind you, that is a show for four-year-olds. Uh, this is, uh, so one of the things, you know, uh, people say, I have, I have smart friends. I have dumb friends. I have smart friends. Smart friends ask you smart questions. They'll say, uh. Uh, what do you want to be in five years? Do you want to be making comics or reviewing comics? And then I got a dummy brain, so I was like, why can't I do both? And they basically, you know, they talk about how, you know, you focus and you're taking different paths. Uh, but they'll also say, who is this book for? What's your audience? And I was like, people with money? It's like, no, that's... Even when you have a mainstream audience, it's not everyone. So what is this? Uh, I, I did a little salty uh, tweet that got a little too salty uh, yesterday. And I basically said, what is your target audience? Because from this, I'm going to tell you what I think it is. Okay, this is just annoying. These, this, is, this is Sesame Street stuff. There was actually even a period in time in Sesame Street where they dialed down their target uh, age. For a while, when I was a kid, I think like the target age was like six because it was like teaching you how to read and stuff like that. Uh, but then I remember when Zaxxon was born, uh, we started watching with him and they had actually regressed it. 
now it was it was literally teaching you just about like shapes and colors and they really weren't pushing the reading thing and then i remember looking it up and they're saying oh their target audience is like four like right now um so this is how you act when you're trying to entertain four-year-olds over you get uh, uh overdone facial expressions and uh bright colors there's so much cool stuff going on at the marble booth this year Okay, so we're going to see the actual target audience. Sadly enough, Marvel's target audience is itself. Ooh, what are you guys doing? You got to get to New York Comic Con. You got this week in Marvel panels and the live stage event. Oh my gosh, how are you guys getting that? Slow-mo running. Oh, let's do it! This is the point where your soul dies. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a, this is the audience. Um, Marvel's audience is itself. Uh, hipsters in their 30s who like to LARP as developmentally delayed four-year-olds. Um, there is not one actual emotion in here. Yes, I know acting is portraying emotions you're not necessarily feeling at the time. And this is a skit and they're acting. But when you portray an emotion, it's supposed to be an emotion that exists. Uh, fake happiness is actually not an emotion. That's why it's called fake happiness. We are getting four versions of fake happiness. Uh, and uh, the one to blame is the one on the left. Ryan Pentagos, he has some BS corporate job title. But basically, he does stuff like this. This, this is his brainchild. It's so much worse. <laughs> And he effing did goddamn finger guns. There's no ironic way to do finger guns. If you do it, you're a jagoff. That's it. You, you don't. There's. You don't get an exception for doing it ironically. Women of Marvel will be holding their famous panel and shows like Eat the U Okay, so this is literally beyond parody. Women of Marvel was literally a woman in a hijab. I've talked about this before. Yes, I do have a daughter who wears a hijab. She is a micro percentage of not just the world, well, America, even New York City. I used to live in Hell's Kitchen. I'd go visit her down in kind of near -ish Coney Island. Not that near, but over there. Uh, and uh, I would, in that whole journey, I think I had to take two or three trains, depending on closures. Uh, I, besides her, I would usually see two. And now this would include like walking through Times Square. Um, uh, but of course the woman of Marvel immediately <laughs> has a woman in a job. By the way, you didn't say why women of Marvel is interesting. Uh, who is on it? There's going to be a women of Marvel pill. Oh, wow. Who cares? Yeah. And then they mentioned their shows like Eat the Universe and Marvel Voices. Again, they're hammering the Marvel as lifestyle brand. One of the biggest problems of SJW Marvel when they started hiring people based on identity politics is they started hiring people who don't actually like comics. If you wonder why Marvel all of a sudden turned into really bad ripoffs of Scott Pilgrim, it's because that's the stuff that these the mostly female new uh, editors uh, actually knew about. They didn't know about Spider-Man. They didn't collect Spider-Man comics. They read Steven, or they watched Steven Universe and they read Scott Pilgrim and saw the movie. So now this is this. What is Marvel? It's a, a, a silly billy humor, uh, talking to your audience like they're a four-year-old, a freaking cooking show, uh, women in Marvel becoming... The, oh, is Universe, it becoming Marvel. the one where they talk about black hair? Yes, there's literally a Marvel show about uh, black hair. What is your audience? Black women who like comic books don't want to watch a... By the way, I, I had a, a very uh, well-intentioned guy track down the views for every single one of these lifestyle videos, and they're horrible. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Uh, I could live stream uh, Luna sleeping. Like, I'm working, I just put my camera in there, and L Luna could walk away, and it would do better than these. Like, it's pathetic. So this, this is Marvel. This is Marvel NYCC, New York Comic Con. 
his voice is becoming and Marvel Let's Play. Oh, so uh, what do you got? You got Women of Marvel. What 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 is that? Uh, a cooking show, a segment on black hair, a segment on cosplay. Okay, cosplay is one of the big reasons cosplay is is, is pushed up more is because women like it. But the problem is cosplay doesn't make a company money. And then on the fourth one, they get to something that probably there's a good Venn diagram crossover of actual paying comic book fans, which is video games, specifically Marvel video games. Now, you should show the video game and not this fat hipster's face. We have his fat face twice. Oh, why are you saying he's fat? Because it's a visual medium and you want to see visually appealing people. I just watched the last 30 minutes of Iron Man 3 last night. I've never seen it. I didn't like 2. I heard 3 was bad or very controversial, but the last 30 minutes were freaking awesome. You know one of the things that I really liked about it? Everyone was in great freaking shape. Like, uh, I had to look up the age of Robert Downey Jr. because he looked freaking fantastic. He was 48. He's probably the fittest I've seen him. He, he, like, he looked really healthy. Uh, freaking Karen looked amazing. Uh, Rhodey, he's always in good shape. And uh, who else? Killian, uh, the bad guy. Everyone was in great shape. It's very, very appealing. We don't want to see weird, misshapen midgets. Someone who's never read a comic dressed like Thanos. And two guys that are, I don't want to be on the same subway car with because they look annoying as hell. But they're playing a video game I like. But they're not showing. Also, this is effing ridiculous. Stop with your weird... You know... I, if you ever, like, uh, <laughs> do you like history? I love the history. But uh, back in the early uh, uh, 20th century, late uh, 19th century, I, I'm, it was one of those Northern European um, countries. I don't want to single one out if it's the wrong one. But, the, you know, they would go for expeditions and they would have, oh, the elephant factor. And there's actually, and you can Google this, they would bring black Africans put them in a little diorama of like a village and then people would pay, buy tickets and oh look there's an African. They literally had black people in a zoo. Like this is this weird fetishization of uh, black people that you get from these extremist uh, SJWs. Why is there a segment on black hair? Black comic book fans, how does this feel? Does this feel utterly condescending to you? What, what what what's next? You gonna have a segment on rubbing cocoa butter into your elbows? Like what the hell? We'll be live on stage. No, oh, it's silly. That's so effing painful. Oh, and now we're getting sped up. Oh my god, so Sesame Street. Now we're getting sped up footage. You gotta get ready for a pull list. This is so embarrassing. This is literally her job. So, if you ever worked in the corporate world, uh, usually once a year you have some sort of award ceremony, and they're really, really funny. Uh, because if times are good, <laughs> the the company they're like freaking Tony Montana. Like you'll have ice sculptures, and then when things are bad, you can always tell how the economy and your company is doing by the yearly company picnic and the uh, the award ceremony. Um, uh, I, I saw this flip, like, in one year. <laughs> and we all knew layoffs were coming because, like, when you go from, like, ice sculptures to, like, uh, uh, card table <laughs> in, the, in the next year, you're like, oh, my gosh. Um, but uh, this is the type of bad acting you get in a skit at, at a corporate event. Um, and it's usually, they like to get the, the, the higher ups, you know, the CEO and, and, the, and the higher bosses because, ah, oh, my boss is being funny. And so you, this, this is what you get. Slide at the Marvel booth. Ah! I'll get a cab. Yeah, we're, we're doing this, this silly running for the fourth time. This is, only, this is less than a minute and a half and it's absolutely excruciating. Uh, he's doing a silly run. Who, who? No. You don't want to miss what Marvel. I like. what the hell? White supremacist hand signal. What the hell is going on, Marvel? I've been told for weeks 
online and in the media that this is a white nationalist hand signal. Why is very, very pale Ryan Penagos flashing a white... <laughs> I'm joking around. Uh, it froze. Is this God's mercy? <laughs> This God's mercy smiling upon me. Going on at New York Comic Con. Swing by the booth if you're in attendance. And check out the live stream on Marvel. Yeah, good job. Not even moving your hips and legs to pretend like you're running there. Come if you can't be there in person. Oh, by the way, I just want to say that um, as a former New Yorker, the background on that was really bothering me. I believe they're showing. Uh, Columbus Circle and they went from Marvel to which is like by Radio City Music Hall and they're running to uh, New York Comic Con which is uh, it's over on the Hudson like 34th Street and uh, they should not have gone by Columbus Circle <laughs> they're going in the very wrong direction uh, but anyway that's it uh, Marvel has uh, lost all interest in being a comic book company um, uh, they are a, a lifestyle brand for uh, cooking, uh, black hair, uh, putting on your hijab, uh, cosplaying a character who you, if you've never bought a comic, and uh, showing their faces instead of the video game that you're interested in. You're also going to get silly bill, billy humor meant for developmentally delayed four-year-olds or the out-of-shape 32-year-olds who like to pretend to be said four-year-olds. So anyway, tell me what you think about this video. Subscribe. Make sure you still subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to that Patreon and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content. You, you funded the tape. About $20 in tape yesterday. Um, and uh, I'll have uh, more uh, new comic reviews up later today. Thanks. Bye.